what a perfect show to do on a nice, cool, dark fall night. Welcome back to another episode of Channel Chain. As always, I am your host, Jay. Always is my friend, my co host, my self proclaimed sidekick, Brian Kersey. How you doing tonight, Brian? You okay? You okay, buddy? <laughs> Absolutely yeah, so, splendid. Perfectly splendid. So, yeah, uh, you know, I, I, I've been completely quiet on the text chat and because I'm just like, you know, I want to respond to these, but I also don't want to give anything away. So I'm going to just let him know I saw it, but I'm not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we are talking about the highly anticipated sequel series or technical spinoff. I mean, you know, it's an anthology, but the next installment in the Haunting series from Netflix. And of course, mm-hmm. the first one was The Haunting of Hill House, uh, which was an absolute smash hit. Uh, one of our favorite shows of 2019. Uh, it's not fact, the I believe, favorite. I was gonna say, I, I believe for me it was my number two. Uh, fo- followed, like, only beaten by, I think, Euphoria. Which, true, true. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, which, you know, is saying something. Uh, but yeah, um, but yeah, yep. so it had some big shoes to fill, and boy, it, it did different things. And I, I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Um, um, I definitely think about that like a viral audio meme. Ooh, this shit be hitting different. It do hit different though. Like it, it really did hit different. Um, and we'll definitely get into that as we go along. Uh, but you know, again, as per usual with the start of one of these shows, uh, you know. The Haunting of the Hill House uh, was another one that we did in the previous incarnation of the show, um, and we absolutely loved it. Um, it's just, it was a phenomenal show. Because, like, you know, horror is a, de- a difficult genre to, like, you know, nail in the first place in any medium. But it, mm-hmm. is, it is especially hard to make genuinely good, genuinely scary horror television. You know, anytime someone's trying to make a horror TV show, it's usually either some kind of parody or satire, or it's unintentionally super cheesy and dumb. Um, so, like, th- there are only, like, very few exceptions to, like, actual good, legitimate, like, horror, uh, horror TV, which I would, like, probably say, like, the first few seasons of American Horror Story were like all genuinely good like examples of horror tv i would say at least like the first three seasons were all very good genuinely like solid horror tv shows um and i feel like horror i think does work best as an anthology because uh it doesn't really do well with like serialized format i feel like you know it should be an open and closed story uh which you know i'm glad with uh, this uh, haunting series, it became an anthology because, you know, the story of, you know, the Hill House family was done and over with. I didn't want to see any more with them because I felt satisfied and, you know, fully complete with their story. Mm -hmm. Of course, I love those actors. So, you know, they did the smart thing. And they're like, yeah, let's take Nell because we all love Nell. And we're just going to use her as our, like, you know, what major recurring lead she's gonna always she's always gonna be in these every time we have one um and she's going to play a lead role um uh she's she's kind of like the haunting sarah paulson <laughs> yep pretty much uh and uh yeah so what is this particular haunting um about well very much like the conjuring sequel which honestly is really good uh, this one takes place in jolly old England. And essentially, um, Nell's actress, um, who plays a character, uh, she plays a character named Danny. Um, and Danny gets offered a job as an au pair, which is just a fancy word for nanny. 
uh, for these two kids at this one country. Um, and, Why, man? But, and there's a, there's a slight, slight, small, tiny catch that she finds out, like, after she accepts the job. Because, of course, after she accepts the job. Oh, yeah, well, by the way, your, your predecessor, the previous nanny, she kind of died on the premises. Yeah, you don't know how, but she died. And this was also after she found out that uh, the whole entire reason why she was looking into this was because the parents of the children died. Yep, and they need someone to take care of them. Yep, because the uncle is too busy like doing like big business stuff. Uh, at least as far as we know in the beginning. Um, yep, but but she's not alone. In the house, it's not just the three of them. Yep, and and all of the house staff are all like familiar faces and pretty huge actors, including one of our personal favorites. Uh, you know, our boy, my zombie. I was so surprised when I saw him. Right, I was like, hey, it's my boy. Good to see you again. Last time I saw you, you were a scarecrow and you got murdered. Yep, Harley Quinn. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, it was good to see him. Um, so he plays the chef. There's a uh, there is a chef character. There is a groundskeeper slash you know main maid, or no, there's a main maid and slash house cleaner type. You know, you know, she, that's her job. And then there's the groundskeeper slash gardener uh, woman named Jamie. We'll get into her later um, and uh hannah is the name of the housekeeper yeah hannah hannah gross is the name of the housekeeper uh owen is the name of the chef played by robbie and yeah jamie is the groundskeeper who uh like also is like a gardener as well um and so um you know the entire staff pitches in to like you know help take care of these two kids miles and flora and, you know, um, at first, of course, like any horror movie, these kids seem pretty great. Like, they're the normal kids. Um, the boy is a little creepy, but around his age are kind of creepy. He's like 11, 12-ish. You know, that's the age where they, like, start to discover things and they get a little creepy. So, like, a little bit. Although, and the, do- I, the daughter... I feel like, yeah, go ahead. My bad. I was just going to say the daughter is a little weird too uh, with like her making talismans and stuff and her dollhouse. This, 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 yeah. Elizabeth watched like the first two episodes. We, well, like when we were on the phone and we were, and we were like, yo, I, I'm not going to lie. The second I, the second I saw the dollhouse with all these creepy ass like talismans and homemade dolls, I, I probably would have dipped. Not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> look, man, I, I I really don't fuck with dolls. I have a like I have a personal trauma story involving Chucky, and I, I just I've never, never, never fucked with like dolls or any of that. Like obviously, like I'm a nerd. I play. I I, and I, I love action figures ever since I was a kid. But dolls, I don't fuck with that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell this story very, very quickly. So I was about maybe three, four years old, like super duper young. Uh, but I, memory was forever burned into my brain. Uh, I hadn't learned to unlock the doors yet, right? Because I'm still a little, little kid. My, uh, she had a Chucky doll. And it was oh, one of those dolls. Oh, the Chucky had, story. And it was one of those dolls where you pull the string and it has like the little knife, and it says, "Hi, my name is Chucky," and then it tries to kill you. And so I'm, a, I'm a little kid, you know. Obviously, as a, as a like a three, four year old, you, you don't have a separation between fiction and reality. I had seen this movie, and it scared the shit out of me. I was pretty scared. And then afterwards, my sister decides to take the doll out, pull the string, like walk out of the room, lock the door behind her. And so little me is out here stuck, like, oh no, no, he's gonna get me, he's gonna get me, he's gonna kill me, mommy help, mommy. Oh yeah, uh, ever 
ever since then. Just no. I don't fuck with dogs, yeah. man. Yeah, um as you can see, I've heard this story before and uh to this day, Jay will not touch anything Chucky related. Nope. I absolutely positively refuse. Obviously, as an adult, I know it's real, but that memory so etched into my mind that I, I just can't let it go. Um, but yes, um, moving on, though, you know, like small things creepy here and there, and, you know, does its thing. It, do, it follows horror to a T, but not to the point where it's predictable. It does proper, and you know we can say carries over from it is um, like if you pause certain frames and just look the ghosts and spirits and shit in the paused frames, and I think that's a really cool touch, and it just solidify kind of the aesthetic vibe. I really. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, it, get, it gets weird, but Danny's kind of okay with it for a while. And point where they play hide and seek, and I'm just like, oh, oh I've seen the conjuring. I know what's going to happen. Oh, and come on. Work. We've seen Danny Horror Movie. When they start to go hide and seek in a scary house, you know shit's about to go down. Yep. And, uh, and that through this hide-and-seek experience, and Danny is claustrophobic, and she is, like, just... She literally has a full-on panic attack. This whole-ass kid is just like, well, shit. You know, like, and then progressively, shit starts scarier and scarier. We find out more what? about, like, the lore of the house and just how mm -hmm. deep this lore goes. Which the funny thing is, is that scene that you're saying where she we find out that she's claustrophobic. That wasn't the hide and seek scene. Mm -hmm. The at the scene where she gets oh yeah oh, oh yeah oh, that 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 was yeah that was when she was like tucking them into bed right and um like even they were saying like I I need to get the my nightlight out of the closet right and yep. then yep and they close the door yeah yeah now I remember. But yeah, so that happens. Obviously, Danny is not too thrilled about that. Um, and, you know, she's just like, man, what is wrong with these kids? Um, and then, you know, things, like, get deeper and scarier. We learn more about, like, kind of the past of the kids, of the staff, of the house, how deep the lore of the house goes. Um, obviously, we're still in the non-spoiler section, so I'm not going to talk deeply about that yet. But it gets really, really interesting. One thing I will say about this show, very much like the Hill House season, Haunting of Blind Manor is not just a horror story, right? No. Like, um, just like uh, for Haunting of Hill House, it was a family drama with a horror like element and like theme all throughout. I'm not going to say exactly what the theme for Blind Manor is because it kind of gives away like the progression of the story. Uh, but it's very different. It's honestly I would, something I don't, I don't think I've ever seen before, really. I would say that I think that uh, Blind Manor is more dramatic than oh, yeah. Hill House. Yeah, it's not as... It, I think Hill House is definitely scarier. And if you're yes. if you were more into Hill House because of the scare factor and the horror element, you might not like this as much. But... I don't know. For me personally, I, I, I'm not going to speak for Brian, but uh, for me personally, I felt like I was more invested in the Bly Manor characters than I was the Hill House characters. And like the, like the drama and the twist really made this interesting for me. Uh, um, I think maybe I slightly prefer Hill House, but I can see why. You'd see, say um, the characters and, more. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say like the. I mean, again, this is a spoiler-free section, but I think you know, I was, I was definitely saying all throughout that I think I was still like Hill House better until we got to the ending or the final episode. At final episode, that was like okay, yeah, I, I think I like this slightly better, ever so slightly, 
but slightly better nonetheless. Yes, but also keep in mind that um, I literally just finished it like an hour yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. And you've had more time to sit with uh, Hill House. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, but, but yeah, um, also, I've always been a big fan of horror. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But, but yeah. Uh, so uh, what? So what? Yeah. What are what are your uh, like spoiler free thoughts to close out the spoiler section? Um, um, it was definitely not exactly what I was expecting, and I will admit that uh, in the beginning, it's a lot slower in the beginning. Yeah. I'll, yes. That's a hundred. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. Like, uh, it took it took a while for it to get going, but once it got going, I was just like, oh, okay, this is where we're at now. All right. Interesting. Yeah, um, without saying anything, they actually take like a similar plot point to to uh, Hill House, but they reveal it a lot earlier. Yep, and also, and, and also they take like a completely separate horror trope uh, that like wasn't explored in Hill House as much, and they flesh it out more. And there's like even more deeper backstory. I don't know. I, I think again the reason why I like this one slightly better, just in terms, uh, is because of just all of the lore, the the character interactions, the reveals, the twists, the drama. I um, I totally get that. Um, but there are two other things that I need to point out: one positive, one negative. Okay. And uh, the negative, real quick, this is not spoilery, but you could tell that uh, a couple of the actors, especially Hill Hell alums, are not British in real life, and you yep. could kind of tell. Oh, 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 yeah, the actor who played Luke in Hill House, like, that, that actor. Uh, he's terrible. British. Is he really? Mm -hmm. that, that, that sounded like a fake accent to me. Oh no, he he's British in real life. Wow. Wow, that sounded like a fake accent to me. He's like one of the only ones. But um but the also the other thing that I want to point out. Yeah, flash is, uh, are you are you are you talking about flashback dad that had the bad accent? Kinda. Ah. Uh, okay. It, it was in and out for me. Like I felt like he was doing a good job, but you could really tell that it was fake. Got you. And also, um, somewhat, even though I really like the actress, the narrator, I feel like, at times, you could tell. Huh. I didn't pick up the narrator as much. The narrator felt pretty natural to me. But, uh, but yeah, as we said, there that was the second thing that I wanted to point out, is mm -hmm. that there's a narrator to this story, because... Unlike Hill House, they decide to go a different framing route. Yeah, it, it, it which... give, yeah they they do a very unique framing device, and then the payoff at the end, like like I'm saying, man, the, the full circle nature of this season was just so fucking good. Because it, uh, it, yeah, and it definitely took the whole like, uh, let me tell you a let me tell you a scary story type. Yeah, situation. and and I, th I th and I think it definitely felt uh, like it really fit the anthology vibe, right? It's like, sit down, let me t let me tell you a little story about you know this, mm -hmm. a haunting. Definitely and made me, definitely kind of made me think uh, a little bit like uh, old school. Are you afraid of the dark? I was just about to say it's like an adult version of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, <laughs> man, that's funny. But yeah, uh, so now we're going to get into spoiler sections because there's a lot of interesting, <laughs> interesting, interesting shit. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I, I will say is like straight up, like like Brian mentioned before, it's a very slow start. Do not give up on it. Give it till episode four. There is stuff that happens in episode four. Once you get there, if you're not sold on it, quit. And mm -hmm. uh, but. Trust me, that the twist that's revealed there, like it from that point on, I was like, all right, let's get to the next one. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, let's okay, so let's fucking talk about it. Holy shit, 
Holy mm-hmm. shit. The the whole route they went with possession and the possession of the children, which, you know, is something that I suspected uh, pretty early on, um, especially because of, like, the shift personality between Miles and Flora and, like, you know, the repeated, you know, phrase, you know, perfectly splendid. And we noticed in the flashbacks with um, the... Uh, original au pair i want to say her name was rebecca yeah rebecca uh rebecca yeah. consist uh constantly said perfectly splendid and i was like wait a minute yeah because at first i thought it was just that like little like kid, she picked, uh, yeah yeah like she imitated she imitated the nanny because she really looked up to the nanny because like you know they she like was the one taking care of them that's what i was thinking at first too but then i was just like wait Wait, combined with all this creepy shit? Hold on. And, and then they then, took it even further. Yup. Because mm-hmm. uh, the little boy, with the fact that uh, he kept doing things that seemed way too adult for him. Yeah. And uh, like he was, how he, you know, was, yeah, he like... He, he was playing with a lighter. He was also, like, flirting with Danny, which was really creepy because it wasn't just, like, a little kid trying to be sweet to, a like, an adult that he had a crush on. It was... It felt genuinely like how a grown-ass man would approach a girl he was interested in. And then, uh, when they were all eating dinner together and they were having wine... Yeah! And, and he, it he, wasn't he, just... He, it wasn't just little kid, hey, can you sneak... Maybe sneak me a glass of wine... He's it just was... like, give me a. He's like, give me a fucking drink. Like, what do you mean? I. What do you mean? I can't have one. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, wait, what? Something's weird with this kid. Uh so. All right. How, so how do we? How do we want to start this? Because that's there's a lot of shit to unpack. Which well, I know that typically, you... typically when we do these shows, we go character by character. All right. So first, I want to start. I want to start with Hannah because Hannah's reveal like was one of the first ones where I was like, "Oh man!" Yeah, that was like the big moment where it's like things are starting to get real, and it's like, "Holy crap!" That, yeah, because all, that's... All, all through all throughout, you see that like Hannah, like the you know the maid, the, the main like you know cleaning person, um, she kind of has this loop around the house and at first you're just like, oh yeah, she's at the maid. She has a routine. She has, you know, certain rooms she has to clean. She goes to certain places. And then, and then she has moments of where she just gets lost in thought and yep. spaces out for a minute. Mm-hmm. And uh, then one of the characters reveals that his mom has dementia and so you start to maybe think, are they... Uh, oh, that, going... Yeah, are they hinting at the fact that she might also have, like, early signs? It's like, oh, man, that's sad. And then, like, you know, she has this obsession with going to church and, like, you know, lighting candles for not only, Re- uh, like, Rebecca, who was dead, but also, of course, Miles and Flora's parents, who were the ones that gave her the job in the first place and allowed her to stay at the house. Um, You know, so... You know, at first you think, oh, that's just a sweet sign of respect. And then later, like later down the line, you find out, holy shit, Miles, possessed by a ghost, pushed her down the fucking well and broke her neck. Mm hmm. Because one other thing that kept irking you was every once in a while you'd see her and she'd see a crack in the wall. Mm-hmm. And she she even brought it up once or twice to another character, and they're like, "I don't see anything." And, yep. And uh, then we had that episode where it was all in her head, and and we were seeing it all from her perspective. And I got to tell you, I never thought I'd make this connection. But do you know, you know who it kind of reminded me of? Who? Her episode and her spacing. Who kind of reminded me of Madame Raz from She-Ra. Oh, from She-Ra, yeah. Because her because her visions of like uh you know uh what you call it um like the previous She-Ra. Mara. Um and yeah, Mara and how she'd like kind of confused the two and she'd confuse the present with Adora. Yeah, yeah. 
And then I can we totally saw, see that. And then we saw the episode from her perspective. And it's just like, in her mind, it's non-linear, but... Yeah, and it's like a split timeline almost, yeah. Yeah, so that's what it kind of reminded me of, but that reveal of like a... Oh. Yep. And then, like, once that's revealed, we we start to kind of piece together, like, the whole, like, backstory on the possession. And uh, so I want to, like, jump from Hannah to Miles, actually. Because we find out, because obviously, you know, Miles is revealed to be the one to uh, push Hannah. And so it's like, all right, what the fuck is the deal with Miles? Um, and, of course, you know, it starts with Miles' parents dying. Yeah, of course, that would, you know, mess a kid up emotionally. They send him off to boarding school, and, you know, he seems okay. Um, you know, he's a little detached, as you would be if your parents had just died. Um, and uh, you know, on his first day b- back at boarding school, he... Um, which, by the way, it seems to be... It, which, seems, uh, but which, by the way, is a Catholic boarding school. Um, yep. But it seems... He gets a letter from his sister. Mm-hmm. And and you and you don't ever see what like what's in the letter until like much later, um. And uh, after that, basically Miles goes out of his way to start as much trouble as possible so he can get sent home. Well, and at first we're not ta- it, it talks. It starts off small because uh, they find out that uh, one of his classmates. Is not there because uh, he broke something. Like mm-hmm. he was just injured and was gonna return. So in little kid brain, he's like, "Okay, uh, he was injured and got to go home." So yeah, maybe if I injure myself, uh, I'll get to go home. So, so he, he climbs jumps up off a tree. A tree. Yeah, he yeah he climbs up a tree with a, uh, a kid kind of just to, like at first it's just like, "Oh yeah." Let's see who can climb the farthest. And it's just like, all right, I give up. I give up. And, and, you know, Miles, he keeps going. He gets as high as he possibly can. And then he jumps off and, you know, injures himself. But he still doesn't get to go home. Um, Mm -hmm. And so then shit starts to escalate. Uh, You know, he makes friends with the kid who, like, you know, he was climbing the tree with. He's like, man, I feel bad. I'm sorry. It's like, "I, I hope you're okay. And he's like, you know. I uh, I know you know things are probably rough for you with the stuff with your parents. Well, I just want you to know you do have friends here, Miles. And then he goes, "Oh, thanks." And then the next day, he literally like almost killed this poor kid. And keep in mind, this is like a what 12? 12? 12 year old. Yeah, he's like twelve year. Yeah, he's like eleven, twelve years old with a broken arm, and yet he still manages. He's got enough. Yeah, he's. He's got enough strength to almost choke the life out of this poor other kid. Yep. And then he goes like full on like serial killer psycho um, because like, you know, obviously like his teacher, his homeroom teacher, the, the like the pastor or the father who uh, like is in charge of the, his homeroom. Like he sees that this kid is troubled. So he starts, you know, doing not only the teacher thing, but the priest thing. And it's like, hey, man. Like, look, you're going through a hard time. You've experienced more death than any child should ever have to. And I'm sure that's, you know, rough on you. But, you know, you don't have to be alone. He tries to, you know, he tries to do his best to console him or whatever. And, you know, Miles plays it off. And he's like, all right, I'm going to listen. You know, I'll I'll do what you say, father. Um, And, you know, one thing that we saw all throughout, like, the lecture in the beginning of, uh, you know, this flashback, as well as, like, you know, uh, in... um, other scenes in the flashback was that the uh, homeroom teacher had a pet dove that he kept in a cage in the classroom. Next thing we know, dove ends up dead. Mm-hmm. Not only and dead, when, but like, on display for his owner to find. Yep, in the cage. It wasn't yep, even in the, in the cage. cage, dude. It was... Uh, it wasn't in the it cage? It was in the pew. It, was, the it was, like, in the church. He snuck in the church oh. and... Sh- like put him like front and center on display. Yeah. So obviously, you know, um, like the 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 father is like, 
all right, we're gonna at least, uh, uh, you know, they obviously go to the principal, and the principal's like, all right, Miles, we'll let you, we'll, you know, given your extenuating circumstances, we'll go ahead and just let you off with a little suspension and just kind of, like, you know, let you get back to class after that for a couple days. Uh, you just have to apologize. But then Miles doubles down, and he's like, you know, I could have done a lot worse. He says, I'm I sorry. I'm sorry I didn't I'm do sorry more. I'm sorry I didn't do more. Yeah. And it's just like, well, fuck. And of course, that, of course, that gets him sent home. And well, then later. Well, before the, he gets sent home, though, the priest. Yeah, one of the, yeah, the one, father, yeah, the kid. Yeah, the father, yeah. The father okay. comes up yeah. to him and they like have a conversation. And it's just like slightly he mentions, I was trying to find your key. And it's like, what? Yep. And he even mentions yeah, the key right before he jumps off. And so yep. you're like, what the fuck? And then, uh, so, and then, uh, you know, as he getting sent home, like, it cuts to Miles' room, and, uh, like, one one of his friends, you know, or not one of his friends, but the kid who, like, almost got choked out, who, like, is Miles' kind of, like, bunkmate, he mm. finds the letter under Miles' pillow, right? And, of course, it's a letter from Flora, and it has, like, a picture of Flora and, like, you know, the, the, the house staff and whatever, and it shows, but it also shows, like, a dark figure standing behind Flora, and she goes, and it says, please come home soon. Or come home. Or something, like, something along those lines. Yeah, it just and, says in big letters, come home. And then it's, so, Miles is like, oh, shit, the ghost is, like, fucking with my sister. I gotta go home to protect her. Um, yep. And so, that's what you think it is. But then you find out, actually, that, like, this entire time, Miles is being puppeted by not technically a member of the blind man or staff, but a member of um, Miles' uncle's staff, uh, his personal kind of like assistant, Peter. Driver. Chauffeur. Yeah, his slash assistant, because he also did like other like odd jobs yeah. too. So, like, I, I, I'm going to just say assistant, because um, he did a okay. lot of different stuff. So, but, Peter but, yeah. is possessing him. And you're like, okay, well, how not, the fuck did... Wait, can he possess him, though? Yeah. I mean... I thought he couldn't leave Bly Manor. I mean, he had to He had to have, because, like, he was the one... He was... Because uh, we, we see that, like, he has that conversation with Miles. It's like, remember in school and stuff, what I told you... Oh. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so, uh, So yeah. he had to have possessed him. We, because remember, he had the whole conversation. We had to go home. Remember, uh, like, uh, it's like remember, we had to go home. You saw the letter, so you you let me do what I had to do to get you home, and now you're here. Right. You know. My bad. Mm -hmm. but... Yep. Yeah, I was confused. Don't worry about it. I was confused on that too when I first saw. Um, to be honest. And that also that also kind of explains uh, like uh, with the old Danny. Where she was like, "Where were you?" And yep, he said, "I had to go away for a while." Yep, yep. So yeah, um, so we discovered that. So since we talked about Miles, I want to go ahead and jump to Peter because it's all connected. We're gonna we're gonna kind of follow this rabbit hole, right? Okay. <laughs> yep. So Peter. now we're gonna. Oh my so, god! Yeah. So now we're gonna jump to Peter. So you, Peter before, is actually yeah. Yeah, go ahead. My bad. I was just gonna say, uh, when you watched this, and before me, you were say you were talking about Peter and his actor, and you're like, yeah, he's in he's in Bly Manor, but his character is a lot different. Yep. And you were very ominous about it. Now I see why. Yep. Because uh, he's a dick. He's he's more than a dick. He is a complete unapologetic asshole. Like you know, yep. his pre his previous character in uh, Hill House was kind of this sympathetic drug addict who you know made bad choices, but like in his like at his core was a good person. Um, mm -hmm. But this guy, oh man, complete asshole, and also. Through him, 
we actually find out kind of more of the backstory of Rebecca, the uh, previous nanny. Uh, because we actually find out that he and Rebecca were actually together. They had formed a relationship. Oh. Um, and, and not a healthy one at that. Yep. Uh, a very abusive one. Uh, he's a very controlling boyfriend. Uh, so much so to the point where, like, Owen is just kind of like, you know, he like kind of he gets involved uh, with, um, you know, what you call it with uh, Rebecca's like teaching lessons because not only is she a nanny, but she's also a homeschool teacher. Um, and so, like, you know, she's teaching chemistry for some reason, even though they're like super young. Um, and she's like, well, you know, cooking and Owen's like, well, cooking is a chemical reaction. I can show them some of this, like baking and stuff. And so they're like making a cake or whatever. And so, like, you know, he lets the kid obviously like, you know, lick the spoon or taste some of the batter. And so they're like, oh, this is great. This is marvelous. Like, uh, Miss Rebecca, you should try some of this. And she's like, oh, no, even no, uh, just... even Hannah gets in on it and tries yeah. some of it. And she and Hannah's like, oh my god, this is delicious. Yeah, seriously though, Rebecca, you should try this. And she's like, oh no, 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 it's okay. I couldn't. It's fine. And he goes, no, I insist. And he's like, you know, he playfully like puts the spoon in her mouth. She tastes it. She's like, oh my god, that's great. And of course, Peter's it's, there. And it's a it's a cute. At first, it's a cute scene because yeah, it's a cute, yeah, it's a, cute it's a scene. Flora saying that it needs more strawberry, and Maz is saying that it needs more lemon, mm -hmm. and then he tries to get the adults' opinions on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, Hannah says that it's perfect the way that it is. Yep. And all of that. And so at the end, after Rebecca tries it, they even get Peter to try it. Yep. And then, so, but after, so, and it's a cute little wholesome scene because this is kind of one of the first times Rebecca actually gets to bond with other, um, like, other members of the staff. Um, she mostly just stays with the kids. Uh, and and so, you like, think that is, maybe Peter is starting to bond with the other members of the staff? Mm hmm But then he pulls her aside and is like, what the fuck? What, what was all that? Why'd you do that? Rah, 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 rah. And it's just like, what the fuck? And then it's just like, you don't ever let uh, like another man put, uh, let you put something of theirs in, uh, in your mouth. And it's like, the fuck is wrong with you, bro? It's just cake. Yeah, and it's like, glad to know anytime a man puts something in front of your face, you'll put your mouth on it. Yeah, like, like what the f Dude, come on. Come on. Really? And then, like, you just find and then he just... just straight up, he then he just straight up old school ghosts her for several weeks. Yep, and all and the, and then you find out like the reason he's been ghosting her is because he's been stealing shit, uh, shit from Uncle Henry, and uh, been trying to like build up a little nest egg, and then and... out of nowhere. Without any warning, he just re pops up and he's like, Hey, I'm sorry for being a dick, but I need you to pack a bag. We're going to America, baby. Like, what? Excuse me? I've come into I've come into some money. These people, they don't care about us. They only want us. Yeah, we'll, we'll just always be the help. We're never gonna be anything else. We can go go to America, start a new life. Yeah. And, you, you know, um, and like Later on, like, you know, obviously when shit goes missing and, like, you know, it's valuable stuff and it's a lot of money, of course, like, Uncle Henry calls, like, an internal investigation and the police are just like, yeah, so have you seen uh, Peter blah, blah, blah? It's like, no, nah, not really. And she goes, well, actually, no, I have. And all of a sudden, he told me to pack a bag and go to America. Well, and then... well see, the reason why she's so open about it is because he tells her to pack a bag and that he'll come for her in the morning, tomorrow morning. And yep. uh, he never, he never does. shows up. He never shows up. We wonder why. So and she then... she's like, uh, he ghosted me again, so screw him. Yep. Yeah, and then she's like, and then I, I love it because the cop is just like, wait. So he just randomly shows up after ditching you for a few weeks, tells you to pack a bag, and you don't question that? Because I was like, Exactly. That's what I was thinking too. Like, why are yeah, you watching any of that? And he's like, and uh, 
if you were his girlfriend, uh, why didn't he tell you about the money and where it was? Yep. It's just like, oh, well, shit. And then we find out Peter's fate, and it's just like, well, fuck. So we find out why Peter did not come in the morning. It turns out he's like, we just see his body being dragged off by this scary, mysterious figure. And it's, and like, he, and he's dead, and his ghost is literally seeing his body being dragged off. And he's just like, what the fuck is happening? And we're all like, what the fuck is happening? And it's just like, ah. Mm hmm. So. Now we, we're going to go to a little bit more to Rebecca. So again, we find out later the circumstances of Rebecca's death. Um, she actually Which ends that up, is all the way fucked. It's super fucked up. We actually find out that Peter is the cause of Rebecca's death because he wants them to be together in death. Well, he he knows a way for them to be together forever. Like, mm-hmm. he has this super master plan. Yep. And mm-hmm. But he needs the master to, plan... It requires her to be to also be a ghost in order to, like, pull it off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he gets her killed. Mm-hmm. Well, not only that, but he... Make, basically tricks her into essentially killing herself. Yeah, pretty much. He possesses her and kills her. But not only does he do that, he also leaves her body right before she's about to die. Yep. So, That's super fucked up. It's just like, well, damn. Uh, so yeah, R.I.P. Rebecca and poor Rebecca. Holy shit. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I know, like, you know, we've spent a lot of time and we haven't actually talked about Danny. So now that we've talked about Rebecca, let's go ahead and talk about Danny. Um, So Danny has her own baggage because, you know, of course she can't just be a normal nanny accepting a job. Um, She has her own kind of connection to death in a way. And And uh, when we find that out... Holy. Yeah, it's, it's super fucked up. Um, obviously, it's not as fucked up as, like, possessing somebody and then, like, uh, making them kill themselves. But, like, it's still pretty fucked up. So, um, we find out that Danny, uh, like, you know, Danny gets a call from her mother pretty early on uh, in the show. And she's, like, talking about how, like, calling at her, like, you know, you're just taking this job so you can run away from things. Blah, 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 blah. And she's like, you know, I'm not running away from anything. You know, leave me alone. Blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, later on in the, you know, like, early in the show, we, uh, we like, Miles starts, like, you know, they go through Danny's luggage or whatever. Of glasses. And Danny freaks the fuck out. She's like, you well, know, why did you break She just walks glasses? into the room yeah. and mm-hmm. little Flora is wearing the glasses. Yep. And she's like, take those off right now. And, she, you know, she starts to freak out. Uh, so and then so we find out the origin of those glasses. Uh, so Danny um, had a childhood best friend who, like, she eventually, you know, fell in love with. You know, they they ended up like getting into a relationship, and he proposed to her, and they're about to get married. But then at the very last second, you know, uh, it, it, at least it's framed like, you know, she has cold feet. Uh, she calls it off. And of course, well, um, there is a little hint at what was really oh, going well, well, on. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, well, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that after we talk about the incident. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, you know, because we don't get that hint until a little bit after the like the incident no. is revealed. I mean, we got we, it we, we, get, we get a super small hint in like the second episode. Yes, when uh, when Jamie first shows up. But yeah, we'll get to well, that. No, dude, that's not what I'm talking about. Oh, I was just I'm saying, talking there's... about uh I'm talking about like at the rehearsal where uh where she's getting the dress fitted and the dressmaker is there, female dressmaker. Mm-hmm. 
and she talks about her shoulders and how she should show them off and touches the crease of her back. Oh, see, I didn't even notice that. Honestly, the first hint I got was like in episode two before any of this happened when JV first showed up and they had like a little vibe. This was in the flashback episode. Yeah, no, my, yeah, my, my, her. yeah, my first hint was episode two, um, but so this was later, but still, it was a, but yeah. So anyway, the the incident I, I, I keep referring to is um, so she uh, it's it, at, like at first it seems like because obviously honestly I didn't even notice that scene at first like the episode is framed like you know she just has cold feet and she like you know turns him down. And, like, so he obviously is understandably pissed because, you know, he spent all this time in this relationship and all of a sudden you're just, you know, throwing it away. Like, what the fuck? So he gets angry. He gets out of the car. He's like, why are you doing this to me? Why do you yep. insist on hurting me? Yep. And so he decides to walk out of the car to blow off some steam. And right when he gets out of the car, bam, truck just flat out just runs him down. And all that's left are his glasses. That are cracked. Yep. And uh, throughout, like, um, even in, like, her closet panic attack, she sees this kind of specter with these, like, glowing glasses eyes. Because the last thing that he sees in his eyes are obviously the headlights of the semi. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... And so her last image of him is him completely black with just the reflection of the headlights. Yep, in the glasses. So yeah, that's why Danny is kind of like involved. Uh, like, I mean, not involved, but like why she has kind of a, a connection to this and she's not immediately like running away. Um, and, you know, she is more sensitive to these things. Like she actually believes Flora and can see some of these things. But she's just like, all right, Maybe I'm just maybe maybe I'm just tripping. Maybe this is just my own PTSD from my own incident. Like I I don't know. I I could just be I could just be like you know freaking out. It's cool. It's cool. But then you know later on, and also we find out kind of the 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 true like impetus of why uh, she broke things off with her um, you know childhood best friend. We find out she's gay. Because, mm-hmm. because, like, uh, like I said, like, very, like, I knew pretty much as soon as Jamie entered the room. <laughs> like, as soon as Jamie entered the room, and like, I, her, I didn't pick it up then. Her entire face changed, and I was just, I didn't, I didn't pick it up then. But uh, them talking a couple times in episode two, I was like, uh, am I getting a vibe? No, nah, I was being Elizabeth legit. Like as soon as Jamie entered the room, we both said out loud, "Huh, gay." Because <laughs> like what? we 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 I, uh, like both her and I have a very very acute gaydar, especially when it comes to TV, and it's just like, "Yep, there it is." That that's that's the difference. That's the different, and it's an organic kind of different too. It's not just gay to be gay, um, and so of course you know she ends up falling for Jamie, and it's like at first you're just like, oh fuck, oh fuck, here's the parallel between her and um Rebecca. Oh no, turned but turns out Jamie's not a complete sociopathic asshole, so it's actually a very sweet and wholesome relationship. Which is funny though because the. Uh... We find out in her, um, because there's one scene where Jamie's just like, okay, all right, cut the shit. I'm going to tell you all my baggage right now. Yep. And, uh, she does. And part of it is that she admits that she went to prison for a couple of years. Yep. And uh, this was the only, she has uh, her own, and this was the only job that she could get because of all, like, because of the felony or whatever that she had caught. And also because while in prison, she learned to love gardening. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that, and that plants will never like betray you, and 
Yeah, because because her family all abandoned her after all that, and especially when like they discovered that you know, you know, you know her how who who she really was and what she was really into. Because obviously this was uh, oh we didn't really mention this, but uh, this mainly takes place in the eighties. So yeah, yeah. Um, it, it wasn't really accepted. So like you know, shit was rough for Jamie. Um, and so. You know, eventually, Danny, uh, you know, she gets tangled into this whole, whole thing, uh, which, you know, we got to put a pause on the Danny explanation real quick, because in order to fully talk about it, we got to go all the way back <laughs> to the 1600s. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you, you heard yep, me right, because, folks. Uh... Yeah, you heard me right, folks. We're going back to the 1600s. Uh, because because... Uh, similar to Hill House, we get a whole episode dedicated to the, to the house. origins of the house and the, I guess you could say, curse. Yep, the evil aura surrounding it. Um, and so we find out this story about like these two sisters and like kind of the, like the struggle for like marriage and the, the usual stuff that you get from the story of the 1600s. But then you find out like all this like murder and betrayal that happens and then you know like the sister refusing the last rites from the priest so that pretty much doomed her soul to hell um and uh the fact that uh she was just living for like five whole years just on like spite yeah just pure willpower um um and then she and then so when she finally kicks the bucket, thanks to a little assistance from her sister, who then goes and like steals her whole family basically, um, and then like when her husband, without you know uh, his uh, first wife's guard guidance, kind of runs the house and the family business into the ground, uh, like the wife is like, well, you could sell you know my sister all my sister's expensive ass clothes that she kept in this trunk, and she goes, no, 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 before she died. She made me promise to lock all her expensive things in that trunk and that those would only be given to our daughter when she comes of age. So I'm not going to break that promise to a dead woman. And so, you know, the sister, knowing that she, you know, killed her sister, is like, nah, fuck that. We need money. We need money to survive. And so she goes and she goes to, like, she steals the key from the envelope. And she goes to open the chest. Now we cut to the dead sister who's kind of been, been in purgatory and been, kind of been stuck in this loop, just wandering the house, you know, going up to the like the room, just waiting to see her daughter here for the moment when, you know, she'd open the trunk and get to see those things. Because it's just like, you yeah. know, time moves differently she's for not spirit. Even, yep. She's not even stuck in the house. Yep. She's stuck in a room. Because uh, we find out that when, in this universe at least, when people die, sometimes they'll revisit memories. But I feel like she was so stuck in that like spite ridden mindset. You know what? So you know. Long. You know what this reminds me of, right? Uh, this reminds me of like uh, Lucifer's interpretation of hell. Like you know how hell your 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 personal yeah. hell is based off of your regrets, and you're like stuck in a loop. That's what this reminded me of. She was definitely kind of, like, but stuck in she there. was just stuck in a room. She mm-hmm. she had nothing to do. She tried looking outside the window, and it was all black, and the door was closed, and all she had was the things that she put in in the chest. Yep. And uh, so we see her, and. She, for a very long time, just gets up, it checks to see if everything's still the same way that it is, and goes back to sleep, and just does this over and over for years. Without even realizing it's been years, because obviously she's a ghost and he doesn't really have a sense of time. But it's obviously still, like, messing with her head. Mm-hmm. And uh, And then we cut to when the sister opened up the chest. And she's like, you know, at first I was like, oh, my daughter's finally here. Someone's finally coming. Yay. 
The door is opening. Oh, shit. Someone's finally here. It's the day my daughter gets to open the chest. This is so great. And then she sees her sister and she's like, oh, you bitch. And just straight up murders her. Which is such a good effect and scary, like, yeah, jump moment that, that actually made that me was, jump. That was legit terrifying. And, like, because, the husband because she's, was, like... she's holding, she's holding one of her sister's dresses and, like, out of nowhere, zombie arms come through the dress and choke her to death. Yep. And the husband is like right there, and he, he like, like he comes up. It's basically like in Among Us when you like, you know, like when someone gets killed, and you walk into the room, and you report the body. That's essentially what happened to the poor husband. Mm-hmm. He was just like, "Oh shit, dead body in attic." I I was an I was an admin. Uh, I'm not sus, guys. It's not me, and, but you know, but you know what is sus? This fucking trunk. Goodbye, throwing this bitch all the way in the swamp. Which is so all sad though, because she sees she sees her late husband and her daughter picking up the trunk. She's like, "Oh yay, we're gonna move on together." Yeah, away from yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah. She's gonna take it. They're gonna take it to the new house, and they'll, you know, my daughter will at least finally have a chance to experience these clothes that I've been saving for. That has all these sentimental value. And they nope. won't see me, but we'll all be together, together forever. And she's like, "Nope." She slowly oh. fades into the water, and I love this effect because, like, once she hits the water, she like falls asleep, and she's at the bottom, and then. Again, an- another weird comparison, but this also kind of reminded me of Coco. If you've ever seen Coco, the whole premise of that movie is uh, you know, about Dia de los Muertos. And, you know, the whole premise of like, Dia de los Muertos is as long as someone remembers you, uh, you will have a place in the land of the dead. Uh, no one ever truly dies until they're forgotten. And it's kind of Well, that's an eight. Of- yeah. Sorry. Uh, that's an age-old adage that uh, that you die twice. I forgot yep. what famous author said it, but famous author wrote it, and it's you die twice. You die when your physical body dies, and you die when the la- when the last person who remembers you dies. Yep. And uh, that's basically what happened, but in like a more terrifying fashion. Because over mm-hmm. time, she she slowly loses her face. And then it's just like, oh my god, creepy faceless lady who killed Peter. What's this lady? And then we also find out, that, like, she, like, all throughout time, like, as time just passed on, she goes around and she just starts killing people in the manor because the manor ends up being used as, like, a plague hospital for the Black Death. She starts, like, mm-hmm. killing people. She kills the plague doctor. She killed a and, bunch of uh, people. And we see that there was like a plague doctor esque ghost that was like in the background. Yeah. And uh, in one of she scenes, and we see that it's this dude. And we also see that uh, that little Flora has been singing over and over this dead kid. Yep. This faceless kid. And we find out that it's because uh, she went to their bed and saw a little kid and thought it was her little kid because her mind is so warped over the yeah. hundreds of years. And and uh, like she only sees like slight, vague, hazy memories of her past life and so she's just like, oh, this has to be my daughter. And it's like, you know, it's not actually her kid. You know, at first because, because like that part was revealed in like the Flora flashback stuff, I was thinking maybe they had seen the ghost of like an unborn child between uh you know we'll get to that with uh Flora, but like I thought it was like an unborn situation, and that's why they didn't have a face because obviously this was before the whole you know backstory mm-hmm. of the house was revealed. So I was like, Oops. oh, are they going this route? Ooh. Which the funny thing is, is um, if you remember, and I might be misremembering, but I don't think I am, that in Hill House, there were a couple ghosts that didn't have a face. Yep. So, uh, 
they're finally like expanding the lore of the whole universe. Essentially, yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, so we find out obviously that like faceless Victoria, uh, like sixteen hundreds lady. Um, I forget what her name is. Uh, Lady of the Lake was her nickname, and uh, her real name. Yeah, yeah. Um, was I want to say it's it starts with a P. It starts with a P. I think that was Perlita. No, Perlita is the other sister. Viola, wasn't it? Viola. There you go. Viola. Yes, yes. Viola is the older one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Perlita so, was the uh, sister. Yeah, the sister who gets killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, we find out Viola is actually the one who kills Peter. So it's just like, oh shit. And then so Peter is like. Oh, we don't want to end up like that bitch. So this is why Peter has this whole elaborate plan, which obviously involves Miles and Flora. And now let's talk about Flora, because poor fucking Flora, little um, Flora, man. Yep. So Flora probably has the most like drama and tea connected to her story, and it's just like, wow, this plot is getting extra thick. So. Like, all throughout, we kind of, like, are wondering why she's having these flashbacks and, like, seeing her parents again. We find out that, like, this happens every time, like, that Rebecca takes over. Um, and she, like, gets to see more and more of her past and her past memories. And over the course of seeing those memories, we are able to discover that she is not her father's biological child. Mm-hmm. Well, that's when we, uh, We've, that's uh, when we get to, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Elliot, when we get to his flashback episode, we find out this stuff. Henry, you mean yeah. Henry? Yeah, I think Elliot's the, Elliot is the, uh, is Elliot the brother is that's the, um, is, their dad. I was going Elliot from E.T. Because <laughs> actor. Oh, got you. Oh, Elliot from E.T. Oh, yeah, actor, yeah, because he's flashback dad. Yeah. Um, also, Henry. So, yeah. So Henry, um, we find out uh, because uh, obviously uh, because Flora's thing and Henry's flashbacks kind of yeah. go in tandem because Hen we we kind of see Henry just kind of getting drunk off his ass in his office full of regret, um, and like uh, he also has a ghost, which isn't. I'm, I don't actually think that was a ghost. Right, I think that was just a personification of his own regret. Like it was kind of an alter ego type situation that just looked like his brother. I don't think that was actually no, his dude. Ghost. It didn't look you know, like his I don't brother. Know, what do you think, Brian? It was him. It, it looked like him, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I, I figured it was like an alter uh, ego type situation. But uh, anyway, so through Henry's flashbacks. And also, of course, Flora's flashbacks. We discover that Flora is actually the daughter of Henry and, um, you know, her mother. Uh, because, of, you know, uh, Flora's uh, adoptive father, you know, the one that raised her, um, he was, like, away at business, um, away and out of the country on business for, you know, such a long time. Obviously, because they're stupid rich. So, like, you know, they have to pay... For this big ass house somehow and um, uh also keep in mind so, this big ass house isn't even their house it wasn't even their house it it was their yep. summer house like uh like they're rich enough to have seasonal homes yep and their seasonal house is a mansion a, 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 a big ass mansion that's how that rich they, they are. have uh, three employees Keep up the house. Well, uh, yep. two, so, three, when they uh, decide to actually, like, when they're living there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yep. So, so yeah, um, we, we find, we find this out and it's just like, oh shit, that, that, that's some juicy stuff. And then, uh, but I, I, I really do like this part of it when like the, the dad, like, um, you know, her, like, actual dad like the dad that raised her um is like all right you know i'm exiling you you know you're you're not allowed to interact with you're them, banished um, except for like you know normal normal family stuff you're you're no longer part of the business i'm exiling you little brother i'm banishing you uh, and guess what you may be her biological father but 
I am her dad. I raised her. When some asshole breaks her heart for the first time, I'm going to be there. I'm the one who takes care of her when she's sick. I'm the one she calls to whenever, like, she, you know, scrapes her knee. And when I, when she gets walked walk down the aisle, it's going to be me. And that's going to be relevant later. <laughs> Surprisingly, yes. Oh. Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, we so we find this out, and it's just like, oh, shit, that's crazy. No wonder Henry cares about the kids, but, you know, cannot bring himself to be, like, super attached to them. Even though these kids clearly love Uncle Henry and want him to be involved more, because he's all they have left. Also, uh, but, there's uh, a plot twist involving Henry that we find out in that episode. And that's the fact that uh, there was, there's a person who keeps calling the house and uh they will know. yep yeah and 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 every time jamie or one of the other staff members answers the phone they keep hanging up and like it's like at first you're like oh is it a ghost no it turns out it's just henry bitching out yep. at the last second because like all he all he wants to do is call the house so that uh he can hear flora's voice when she answers the phone yep and so when Flora doesn't answer, he automatically hangs up. Which, uh, they just think that it's Peter, because they think Peter's still alive. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, yep. leads to a, like, morbidly funny moment with, with the gardener and yep. Jamie, and she's like, hate to tell you, mate, the bitch is dead. Or something like that. Yep. And, uh, Yep, I thought that was hilarious. And uh, it was actually the neighbor calling to tell them that Ravi's mom is dead. And it's just like, oh, um, hey, Owen, I got some bad news for you, buddy. And then like, it leads to this really like heartwarming, fun scene of them getting to know each other and like like spilling all their beans at this campfire. And uh, Hannah, we this is where we, I mean, it was kind of obvious, there were hints all throughout, but this is where, like, Hannah and Owen, like, kind of really start to, like, open up to each other, and just like, oh, they're definitely going to get together. And, of course, like, you know, we're, we're telling this kind of out of order, because, like, you know, this is before we find out, like, Hannah's whole fate. <laughs> and then it's just like, ah, oh, dang. Uh, but, yeah, so... Uh, now we can actually talk about Peter's elaborate master plan. Mm-hmm. So his elaborate master plan, because I, I I think he tested this by like being able to possess Miles and like go to the boarding school and stuff. But now he knows like if he if they fully like kind of just push themselves to the back like the kids, um, like they, um, you know Rebecca and Peter can possess them for good and leave Bly Manor, and, like, start their own lives. Which, honestly, is kind of gross, because, like, I feel like if you were going to possess somebody, it wouldn't be a brother and sister. Because, I mean, what, what, is your, what is your long-term goal here? Have them be out of Bly Manor as adults with you together? Yeah, and then, like, have an incest baby? Like, technically, it's not an incest baby because, like, you're... But it is an incest baby because you're in their bodies and they're related. Like, that's gross, bro. Like, you obviously didn't think this through. Um, so, there... So, eventually, it gets to the point where, like, Danny finds all this out. They end up knocking out Danny. And then it's just like, you know, they're going through with the plan. At the, but at the very last second, Rebecca is just like, no, nah, fuck this shit. Fuck Peter. No, you got... I love this little girl. You have to get her the fuck out of here. Um, Which is a shame, though, because she says that it's too late for Miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too late for Miles. And and it's just like, oh, damn. And so, like, you know, they're running, they're running, and it's just like, oh, fuck, what's going to happen? And then, you know, Uncle Henry comes to the rescue, at least we think it is. And then Uncle Henry gets fucked up by, uh, you know, uh, Viola. And then at the very last second, Danny is 
up against the wall. She's like, what the fuck am I going to do? What the fuck am I going to do? Oh, no. Oh, no. And uh, and she she just goes on instinct because they even say the narrator says that she doesn't know why this came to her, but it just came to her and she just blurted it out. Yep, and she remembers the chant that, of course, uh, Flora and Miles used to, like, you know, let Peter and Rebecca possess them. And so she willingly gives herself up to as a vessel for Viola. And so it frees, of course, Bly Manor, um, and it frees Fl- uh, Flora and Miles. They end up going to live with Uncle Henry. Things seem peachy keen and happy, and then like but you know. But then, but then, you probably plot similar, twist. similar to me. Yeah. Look down and is like, uh, there's still thirty minutes left. Yep, it's like wait a minute, and it, and then like you know, obviously she gets with Jamie, they have a good life, and it's just like, but then like you know, this this happy nice montage stops. She goes. She's still there. And she starts having these freakouts and it gets more and more frequent. It's just like, no, 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 no. Because, no, because I, 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 I have. Mm. I was just going to say, Go because, because uh, basically, unlike the other possessions, she's so mindless. And uh, she's just been in this like shell of a person. So, Jamie, not Jamie, ah. Danny. Danny can uh, take control and like has control and feels her scratching like in the pits of her, but everything is okay for now. And it eventually gets stronger and stronger. We end up fast forwarding through the 90s. They end up having a great life, a whole flower shop. And it's just like, no, this shit is getting too strong, too strong. Mm -hmm. I uh, I have to go. I, well, I'm not uh, we even get like this. an unofficial proposal marriage yeah. thing. Yeah, but yeah, they um, you know, uh, she even gets her a ring, and she's like, "I know we can't technically get married, but I want you to know, I I want to spend the rest of my life with you. You know, I love you." And then it's just like, you know, she's doing all these final things to make sure she knows, like, you know, I I love you. It, not, it doesn't matter what happens to me. And it's just and like, well, what's going right on? As, and then right as like, she's giving. Jamie comes home and says, uh, I got the paperwork signed and official. For our, our, yeah, our domestic partnership is like official and we got all of it signed and it's like, she's gone and it's just like, oh shit, she went to Bly and then we, we see that she drowned herself in the lake so that the possession couldn't fully take. She completely sacrifices herself to save everyone. And then two big ass plot twists happen if that wasn't enough. So we well, discover... uh, just uh, one one quick thing. Mm-hmm. Is, okay. uh, we, we find out that uh through the narrator that that um the lady of the lake is still in her, is still in Danny. But yep. Danny's also in there, and so it's and, just and, like... Yeah, and, and Danny is keeping her chained down and keeping her from even moving, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's a, an inter- a constant fight. It's a constant fight on instinct, yeah. It's a really, really nice, but also bittersweet. And then two big-ass plot twists. One, we discover that the narrator is Jamie. It's fucking Jamie. Which I started like... to feel that that might be the case at one point. Especially mm-hmm. because they actually did a really good job at uh, finding I mean, an actress that looked like her. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which Definitely is funny really because like because uh, the current Jamie is played by flashback mom from Hill House, one of the few people who didn't have a present time persona. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And so... Uh, the other thing we find out is like the story is being told to a bunch, a group of people who are, you know, a part of a wedding party. And it's just like, all right, that's a little weird. What the fuck is going on? And then at the end, the bride to be, like, after like the story gets done, everybody leaves. And it's like, oh, that was great. That was wonderful. And then the bride to be sticks around. She goes, you know, at first, 
I thought you were making it up. And I thought, like, you know, this was just another scary story. But then I realized this isn't a ghost story. It's a love story. That's what this whole thing was the entire time was a love story. And then you find out, it's like, you know, I really did think you were making it up at first. Uh, but then I remember, I, I recognized the name, and then I knew there was no way you could be making this up. Because, oh, yeah, why is that? It just must be a coincidence. Yeah, and she's like, oh, no, this must just must be a coincidence. It's like, oh, yeah, why? What's that? My middle name is Flora. And it's just like, wait a minute. Because Owen, in another one of the flashbacks, when she, he's talking to Danny and Jamie in the 90s, like, yeah, Flora and Miles, they don't really remember anything about Bly. They remember us. They recognize Hannah. But they don't remember any of the details. Mm-hmm. Which is, yeah, and also uh, he said, you know, they even uh, stopped by here and uh, Flora, it was like, uh, had a boyfriend. Miles, yeah. Henry, Flora, and Flora's boyfriend. And yep, they're yep. like, what? She's only 12. And he's like, no, she's 17. She's 17. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but yeah, so then, so then uh, we, you know, we, we cut to the wedding and like, you know, you see, and it's just like, oh, so it's just a coincidence. It's like that girl's middle name is Flora. But then we see they do, they have like the Hill House effect of showing the like, like the uh, like current day characters that are older, but then like they're uh, like superimposed with their like past characters. And that girl dancing with her father is Flora dancing with Uncle Dad Henry. Yep, and uh, we even got like a hint of it for a little bit, like right before yep. they revealed it, because uh, there's an older Indian gentleman who just like pats her on the shoulder, and it's like, what? Yep, yep. And, and we it's, it's, find it's later out revealed that... to be Owen. Yep, and it's just like, oh, there it is. Okay, and they confirmed. like, yeah, and it's just like, if we're talking about the ending here, uh. Because uh, we're getting close on time. Yep, uh, yep, yep. It's this big sweeping scene where it's a... Uh, where you see all of them and then you see the past versions of them. And uh, you even see, like, Jamie. And we see past Jamie. But then we see her go home. And, like, all throughout this scene, there's playing, like, this really sad but pretty music in the background yep, and yep. uh i will openly admit that i cried at that moment and see and that uh, that that's uh, that's something that, like the hill house both hill house seasons have in common those endings made me fucking cry man like oh my god yeah and uh, it was weird because it, this crying at the end of this one was it was a mix because it was almost like a little bit of it was happy tears because of the wedding and because they but, all survived. Yeah, but, but, but then, like, a part of it also is bittersweet tears because, you know, Flora gets to be happy with the person, like, forever. Whole speech about how she's in love with this dude. And then it's just like, yeah, Jamie had that, but she doesn't get to have that anymore. And it's just like, oh, Jamie, no. Yeah, Aww. so it was happy. It was a weird mix of happy tears and sad tears at the same time. Yep, yep, yep. And that right there, that is the very reason why I say I can say say like confidently that I slightly like this season better than Hill House. Which, which on just a weird, purely though, story like, aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and uh. Each season now has like a theme, and uh, I I believe that uh, Hill House the theme was like family redemption. Yep. Yeah, family and never giving up on family, unconditional love. Um, and and the theme for this one was uh, love in unexpected. Really know yeah, love in unexpected places, and like you know, like obviously like cherishing that love. And uh, um, you never know what the future is going to hold, so live day by day. Mm -hmm. Yep. One Enjoy day the at time, time you do have. Yep. So, yeah, uh, you know, we both clearly loved it. Uh, final thoughts. We are really getting close to time. I mean, we've only got about 10 minutes left. So, I would yeah. just say that uh, it's, it's different from Hill House, but you can tell that it's the same people. And... Uh, the actors are playing wildly different characters. 
Um, but they're still doing also, a really good I, job. Also, I just want to say real quick, uh, just 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 a like, yo, Nell's actress is surprisingly sick. She was pulling off those like '80s high waisted jeans. And I was like, okay, okay. And also, if they do, if they do a third show, if she's like in a third show for the haunting series, I am not gonna expect. I'm gonna expect her story to end tragically because. Uh, yep. Every single time. She's now two for two. Yep. Every single time. Yep. And um, uh, there might be an expectation of uh, her character making me cry. Yep. <laughs> yep. That That's kind of the expectation of the show from now on. That is the bar they've set. Uh, but yeah, we both absolutely loved it. Uh, I think this is a great one, you know, especially for this time of the season. And uh, yeah, next week we'll be covering Lovecraft Country on Halloween night. So that's going to be fun. Uh, that's going to be a blast. We're also going to be doing uh, Son of Zeus right after that. And a bunch of, uh, we got a bunch of stuff planned just in the pipeline to that. Uh, Brian, do you have anything to plug? I'm assuming not. I haven't really seen you do anything on YouTube. So uh, I'm just going to. Well, um, I will say, I will say this, that uh, I, I am going to try my damnedest because upcoming this week on Friday, um, this is the way. Oh yeah, Mando's back! Hell yeah, boy! And uh, I covered all of season one, and uh, Same. Uh, it's going to be on Friday, so I will cover it after I after work and all. And, and the Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that was the and all. Yep. But uh, yep. but yeah, uh, so uh, that is my hope to start covering that and. Hopefully that'll jumpstart reviews again, or um, at the very least do that one. But I'm I'm gonna be doing, of course, Mandalorian. This is us is coming back. Superstore is coming back. All TV is really like getting into the full swing. Uh, I've got FGO content over on Twitch. I'm playing FGO. Oni Land's happening. Uh, I also play Genshin Impact on there. I play Yu-Gi-Oh with Brian and Tony, and our friend Devin is gonna start jumping in. And also on Sundays. Uh, we play and um, we do an Among Us stream with all the homies and have a blast there. We're gonna do this uh, slasher mode that I've been seeing go around YouTube. Uh, it's gonna be a, a, a fun twist on normal Among Us. Uh, it's, uh, it's gonna be a blast. I figured, you know, since we're close to Halloween, we're gonna give this a try. Uh, it's gonna be fun. Tune in for that. Uh, links to my Twitch are in the description down below. Same for Brian's YouTube channel. Definitely check him out. Uh, so yeah. Uh, we will hopefully see you guys next week in Lovecraft Country, but until then, peace.